Uh, so let's have a look at uh, hash signatures. So the the most prevalent hash signatures that uh, that we have are MD5, SHA1, SHA2, and we also get SHA3 these days. Okay, so the three main types of encryption that we have are symmetric encryption, where we have a shared secret key, and that's used to encrypt and also decrypt. We can get public key encryption, where we use a different key to encrypt and decrypt. But the focus of our presentation is the one-way hash. So it should be fairly simple to go from our our value, our plain text, into our cipher but it should be very difficult to reverse it back again. So the main methods used here are MD5 and SHA1. Okay, so this shows an example. So uh, with MD5 we have a 128-bit uh, signature. So because four characters, four bits, represent one hash character, so we should be able to calculate how many hex characters that we actually get for MD5 and it's 3, 2, 32 characters so we should find if we counted all of these characters here then we'll find there are 32 characters in there to give us our 128 bit signature so we can see that it doesn't matter how much data that we actually use uh, the hash signature is always the same length no matter if it's no characters at all or millions of them, we always get the same length of hash signature. We can represent it in two ways. One is as hexadecimal and the other as base64. These are formats that make it fairly easy to read and to be able to translate between systems. So you can see that if we change one character in our string then it completely changes the hash signature. And in this way we can get a fingerprint for, for data. So if someone changes anything in a message, we it will produce a completely different hash signature. So it's used a lot in generating passwords. So in Windows we used to have a, an, a, an anti-hash which was MD4 and it produced a hash signature for us. The same goes for Cisco routers, where we get an MD5 signature for the password. We can see it here. In this case, our password has been salted, as we'll see in a little minute. The weakness of uh, MD5 and, and hashing signatures in, in general is that it is possible to to build up what's called a rainbow table where we can build up a standard dictionary and then we can hash a whole lot of these values to create what's called a rainbow table. The rainbow table can then be used to match to a hash signature. So in this case we, we can determine that the, uh, the actual original source is my pass. Let's have a look at uh, a sample of this. And we'll look at the hash cracker. So in this case, um, what we have is a number of prepared words. And so in this case, the hash signature for football is this. So let's see if our hash cracker can determine the reverse of that hash by looking up a table and and it has. So let's take a sample word just so that we can see that it's uh, not already pre-prepared. So we'll take a message such as lecture. Okay. So here is our MD5 signature for lecture. We'll just go back and we'll go to our hash cracker, feed that in and we'll see if it can reverse it back. And there we go. Okay, so MD5 can be cut uh, extremely quickly uh, using uh, 
standard lookup tables. You can see we can get fairly complex words such as I have a cold or sentences and it's able to, to crack this one. This takes a little minute to do that. And what it's doing is using a cloud-based resource which goes and trolls the internet till it, it and then it tries to hash each of the words and sentences that it actually finds. OK, if we give it long enough then it will actually find it. OK, so this is the weakness of uh, MD5. So often what we do is we, we use uh, different types of letters. Uh, in this case we change S's to 5's so that it makes it more difficult to determine within a standard dictionary. And along with this we get the concept of our, what's called a collision. So a collision occurs when we get two different words and they produce the same hash signature. And this is known as a collision attack. And the collision itself could be a nonsense, nonsense word. A worry, though, is where we get a similar context, where uh, words have produced a hash which could have been similar in the context derived for it. And we can also get a full context for the hash signature. In 2006, the, an attack on MD5 actually showed uh, that it uh, that MD5 could be uh, cracked uh, within a fairly short time. For SHA1, which is, has a much longer signature, uh, it was shown to be uh, 18 hours. So what we do is that we often add what's called salt to a, a hash signature. In this case, we increase the range of the possible uh, hash signatures uh, for it. OK, so now let's look at our example. And we'll look at MD5 first. So we're going to look at MD5 and SHA1 and SHA2. So MD5 uh, is a standard uh, hashing method and it's been shown to be open to attacks. Uh, there is a theoretical attack against uh, SHA1 and with the SHA2 methods there hasn't been any attacks proven for them. So if we take a sample message Such as this one. Okay, so here is our code, and we're using the standard uh, hash crypto provider used in in .NET. It creates them. We then encode and we compute the hash, and we have a method which converts the hash, the hex into uh, the, the binary into a string. Which gives us our first hash signature of this. OK, so let's land through that. OK, so here is our SHA1 and this is what we should get for SHA1. If we add a dot at the end it should completely change the hash signature that's what we get for SHA. And there is an A, ABC and so on. OK, so this is our 128-bit signature. 
256 that's our SHA-2 uh, we have a 256 bit signature this is for 384 and this is for a 5112 uh, bit signature ok so the code we have is just a standard .NET code to be able to calculate uh, the hash signatures